Canon has suffered a serious outage that has lost some customers' pictures and videos. At the same time, they're being extorted through ransomware that is threatening to leak confidential files onto the internet if they don't pay potentially tens of millions of dollars. This is big news. I'm going to tell you about it, but first a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes any type of website incredibly easy. You just drag and drop your pictures in and they make it look absolutely beautiful. This is perfect for setting up a photography portfolio. It's so much better than just Instagram or Facebook, which are cluttered with ads. You get to define the format and style and make your work distinctly yours. Whether you need a portfolio or any other type of website, head over to squarespace.com slash Tony and get, just get a 14 day free trial, completely free, no obligation. If you love it, use the coupon code Tony and they'll give you 10% off. I need to tell you about my background. I was a principal engineer at a tier one ISP in the office of the CTO. I specifically handled web hosting, a lot of application development, and security issues. I have dealt with network security for a good part of my adult life. I wrote 30 something books that look like these about things like application development and network security. This is right in my wheelhouse. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what this ransomware and outage mean, how they should be addressed and how they really do impact you as photographers. First of all, if you aren't familiar with image.canon, I have a video dedicated to it. It is this amazing service. Just go to this link here. It's this amazing service that has the potential to completely change the workflow of both enthusiasts and professionals. It transfers your pictures wirelessly from the camera to a variety of different places. It could be Google Photos, Google Drive. It could be directly into your Lightroom Creative Cloud or the Lightroom on your computer, just about anywhere you can imagine especially with the R5, it can transfer pretty close to a gigabit per second. It is incredibly fast. That means you never have to touch memory cards and memory card readers. It means that when you sit down at your computer, all your pictures can already be there. Every time you take a picture, it can connect to Wi-Fi and send that picture off within a couple of seconds. And that also means you're getting instant off-site backups. We've heard horror stories of wedding photographers who shoot a whole wedding and then have their camera gear stolen. And not only do they lose their camera gear, but they lost something much more valuable, which are these irreplaceable memories with something like this instant off-site storage that the pictures are still there, thanks to image.canon. It's revolutionary. It's definitely the future for all of us. And it has some serious problems. As a quick overview, it uses the image.canon gateway where pictures travel from your camera through Wi-Fi to the image.canon network. And then it can be immediately distributed to Google Drive, Lightroom, uh, your computer, or a couple of other places. But image.canon also provides some amount of free permanent storage. And they had an outage recently. It lasted, I think, three to four days. On July 30th, they announced the new feature that it was going to connect to the Lightroom Creative Cloud and to Google Photos. These are amazing, incredibly useful. On that same day, the site goes down and did not come back up for several days. And this is actually huge because if you were a professional who just got in the R5 and were planning to use it, it wouldn't work. But okay, it's a new thing and it broke. But what if this happened six months from now when a wedding, when a wedding photographer had come to integrate it into their standard workflow and it suddenly no longer worked? It would have been a major stoppage for these types of people, especially if they had relied on it and no longer could fall back onto the old standard memory card based workflow. But it gets worse than that. On August 4th, they announced that they actually lost some people's files. Both photos and videos were gone. And this is a really massive failure. This is their exact wording. There is no technical measure to restore lost video images. Still images can be restored, but not with original resolutions, our deepest apologies. <laughs> but this is completely unacceptable when you trust a big corporation to manage your files. I see this as a symptom of very poor software development processes. Clearly they did not implement sufficient testing if they rolled out this new production code that actually broke the site because that's what Canon says happened. They should have been having quality assurance people testing everything. They should have rolled it out to a staging site which had checks to make sure that all the files that were supposed to stay in place stayed in place. I've worked on these software development teams. This is exactly how it works. 
even after they rolled it out, they should have had a rollback plan in place. Whenever you roll out a software update, you have a plan to get out of it. But that's not what happened here. They rolled it out and then they just had to shut everything down while they tried to fix it. It should be as easy as flipping a switch to go back to the previous version. And the really the biggest problem here is they lost files, which means that they didn't have backups. Can you believe this image.canon service that they're now actively marketing as part of the R5's feature set didn't have backups going? I reached out to Canon and I said, what happened here? Can you give us some assurances that it's not happening again? Like what steps are you taking? And they just didn't have an answer for me. I believe Canon at this point must exit the storage management business. They're is no way for them to make the progress that they need to make for professionals to be able to use this. But it's clear to me this is the future. It's just that Canon is doing it completely the wrong way. There's an easy workaround for this. Let the camera send the files directly to different devices instead of going through the image.canon gateway. But that's actually much harder than it seems. Now, the R5 and R6 do have FTP capabilities. FTP is the file transfer protocol, which dates back to what's called the RFC 114 from 1971. That's how old FTP is. And if you haven't heard of it, it's because you're probably not an old nerd like me. The reason I think they used FTP is it is very simple to write the code necessary to send files across this very, very outdated protocol. I looked it up and I've, I've written these clients myself in the past as well as the servers, but you can get it done with 250 lines of code and that includes all the little empty lines and comments and stuff and really it, it amounts to just a couple of days of work. That's probably why they picked it because there are so many more file transfer protocols that are much more up to date like when you are on your Mac or your Windows and PC and you're connecting to uh, drive on the network, you just you click and you browse, right? And that's pretty much what you would expect using a modern device like a $3,900 camera, but it's not like that. The implementation is so poor that me, an old nerd, had a really hard time getting it working. Part of it is the user interface is just terrible. You have to manually type in the path on that little screen, and if you screw up the capitalization on something, the whole thing breaks. That's right, it includes file transfer, but it does not let you browse folders. That's how basic it is. It can't just pull up a directory and let you pick one. The error messages that it gives are completely non-descriptive. So something breaks, it doesn't connect, you have no idea why, and thus you have no idea how to troubleshoot it. Really, it's a 1971 protocol and it feels that way because even if you've used FTP clients, this is not like that. It's even more basic. But I will say once I got it working, I could take pictures and it would go directly to my storage. It would go directly to my computer. And that in itself was amazing. But am I ready to really recommend this? No. The image.canon gateway, that's a lot friendlier. It works a lot better. But at the same time, I'm feeling like I can't recommend this to people. The answer to this is Android. The question is, how can Canon transfer files directly from the camera over to your Google Drive, over to your network attached storage, over to your Mac without having to go through Canon Image Gateway, which has proven to be a problem? They need a more up-to-date operating system. The Canon operating system does not have basic features like the libraries that you would need to connect directly to Google Drive. And Thus, the programmers working on it have to kind of write every little bit of line of code themselves, and thus, of course, they would pick the simplest to implement client and then not implement like a proper browsing GUI and stuff. It's just, it's too basic. So let's talk about this malware attack that is currently affecting Canon. Quite a few of their sites went down several days ago, about the same time as this outage, but Canon says they are just completely unrelated, and I actually believe them. I think they just had a really terrible week. The internal message from Canon's Crisis Management Committee says that access to some Canon systems is currently unavailable as a result of a ransomware security incident. They were hacked by a group named Maze. Maze is a for-profit hacking group that, well, they commit cybersecurity crimes basically and then extort the businesses into paying them. 
their message is, we hacked your network and now all of your files, documents, photos, databases, and other important data are safely encrypted with reliable algorithms. So, so what happens is they take the data, they leave it on your computers and on your servers, they just encrypt it. They garble it up so you can't read it, but all you have to do is enter a password in to get everything recovered. This form of ransomware made a lot of people a lot of money for many years, but it no longer works that well because modern storage systems have backups, but they also have snapshots where if something gets encrypted, an IT guy can go in there and with a couple of clicks, just roll it back to the working state that it was in a couple of days ago. And this has really undermined the ransomware business model. So what the ransomware companies are doing now is they will take your private data and then threaten to publish it. This recently happened to Intel, like in the last few days, they released a whole bunch of private Intel data, including like confidential diagrams for their chipsets and such. You might have recently heard about Garmin. They make GPSs and smartwatches and they recently, all their systems went offline and a lot of these devices failed to work because they had a similar ransomware attack. Ransomware is hitting hospitals and universities, private companies, governments. It is a real problem and the latest victim of this is Canon. Canon has a choice. They can pay Maze. I don't know how much they're asking, but it could be over $10 million. They pay them, they get their files back and the files that they stole stay secure. Now you might say, how can you trust a group of cybersecurity criminals? And well, interestingly enough, they are actually pretty trustworthy when it comes to this. And they also offer really good customer support generally. They have to be trustworthy because if they took your ransom and then leaked your files or didn't give you the keys to them, then nobody else would pay them. So they have a reputation to maintain. They actually operate like a trustworthy business, even though they're operating outside the law. I reached out to Canon to just find out what was going on. And they said, hi, Tony, we are currently investigating the situation. Thank you. This is the same answer that they've given to every outlet. This is the same answer they gave to my questions about image.canon, the reliability, how they were going to address it long term. And it's really kind of insufficient. I understand that while they're negotiating with the maze people, they probably can't make public commentary, but at the same time, I gave them several days to try to figure out an answer to this. The Maze ransomware is entirely separate from the iCloud outage. That's not exactly encouraging. That means both their software development processes have serious problems and their IT security has serious problems. So as I look forward to making recommendations about using image.canon for either personal or professional file transfers, it makes me very concerned. If Maze got into Canon's IT network, there's every reason to believe that some other hacker could get in and compromise the image.canon files and actually get to people's files. It would not be the first time cloud image storage has been compromised, like Dropbox has been hacked, I iCloud has been hacked, and very personal pictures were leaked. Like This is something that actually can happen. And it makes me and really anybody who stores personal files afraid to use these types of cloud services. It betrays our trust. So we either need to trust Canon or we need a way to remove Canon from it where our personal devices communicate directly to our own personal storage that we do trust. And it makes me ask the question, do you trust Canon's IT security now? Would you trust them with your personal files going forward, knowing that this has happened. Realistically, I think these two pieces of news are a serious setback to what I see as the future photography workflow. It means if we can't trust Canon to be the middleman, then we have to wait for them to develop better camera side software for the file transfers. And like I said, the only way I see that really coming true is if they adopt a more sophisticated operating system, which is probably going to have to be Android. But that would be that would be a really big deal. So maybe we're stuck with memory cards for a while longer. I'd like to hear what you think down below. How should Canon respond to this? Should they just pay up and move on with it? Or should they allow their personal data to be leaked and restore everything from backup? I think the real problem with paying companies like this is it encourages them. They go ahead and attack other companies. But the rumors say that Garmin ended up paying. So 
I think as long as there are companies out there willing to pay, they'll keep doing it. Let me take a second to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. You don't need to be some big computer nerd in order to make a gorgeous website with Squarespace. But when I picked Squarespace, I was still that big nerd and I went carefully through everything and I liked both the flexibility and the power of it. And even though I had run web hosting services for huge corporations, I didn't want to be in charge of that as a photographer. I wanted nerds back there making everything work beautifully. I've been happy with Squarespace for many years now. So check it out on a big nerd's recommendation. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Try it out free, no obligation, no credit card required. And then when you love it, give them the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace.